Well, good morning. It's Monday and it's time for a little garden tour and we're going to pollinate a squash. Well, welcome back. One more thing we're also going to do is we're going to take some slips off of the rest of the sweet potato and I'm going to show you how I do that and set them up in some water. But real quick, let's get going with our tour and then we're going to do some pollination. Okay, so over here in the salad and herb garden, I took a lot of seeds out of here, probably three different varieties and I've got just a couple of thing, more things in here. That's another romaine. And this is the only deal that I've really got come into like a point of viable seeds. Um, so I'm going to let it keep going. I think right here with this one, what happened is that... Um, because see, the reason why you have to let it go all the way to brown is because the plant is still feeding the seed and turning it into what it's supposed to be. So I think when this kind of got broken here... Um, it put this on a bad track, but I kind of left it there because it's helping support the one that I'm keeping going for seed. And this is an arugula that took a long time to go to seed, so I'm going to collect some seeds off of that. Now this is about to, I'm going to put some compost on here, um, some manure, and um, I think, I don't think I have any earthworm cast or worm castings right now. Um, so I'm going to give this a good layer of stuff. And then this is going to be my sweet potato bed. So um, I'm going to have sweet potatoes in multiple places, but this is the prime place that I'm going to set up. So next week when we get together, um, I'll be able to show you the footage of how I set this bed up. Sweet potatoes are, um, you can make them vine, um, but they're actually a runner. So um, I'll show you in a little bit when we look at the slip, how where each of the leaves are, if that part is touching the ground, um, then it'll go down and it'll become kind of its own little plant and make its own sweet potatoes. So we're gonna let this bed kind of be a runner bed whereas some of the other sweet potatoes we plant they're gonna kind of be worked up a trellis so let's keep going all right so I knew that everything needs a good feeding and most everything last night got some compost tea and it coaxed this female flower um, to open up and so you see we've got two right here this is the first one to open up so if we can get some good pollination going on with this flower then another week or two we'll have a really fat squash there so as you've I've mentioned over the past couple weeks and this isn't the only one I have I've taken at least three rounds of samples of pollen but this is what I'm going to use today and I'm going to show you here in just a minute after we get to the end of the tour um, how I'm going to get that in there and get it pollinated so yay now the strawberry over here lo and behold is making some microscopic strawberries so we're happy about that and we got a little bit of baby cilantro going there just to get us through the season and I always kind of miss the back of this bed. So we've got a happy okra going right here. And I've got a couple of mustard greens that I'm letting go to seed to collect a mustard seed. And this is the little inazi bean that I've got going. And it looks really happy. It's got... Um, you know the presentation potential there for some flowers so i'm hoping after i get a good fertilization going on everybody that they're just all just gonna perk up and all the females are gonna come out this uh spaghetti squash is super happy um you can see that it's made a very very tight um connection there i was gonna come and tie it up to this beam here but it's connected so hard it's I gotta get another, um, another, what you call it, tomato thing, cage or something to get this up off the ground, um, just like the rest of them, because it needs to be climbing up and not laying down, and like I said, I think this one, too, needs some fertilizer, I gotta pull some weeds out there, that's a, some kind of weed, too, too happy of a weed. And then here we still got um, this pepper going good. That tomato's pretty happy, and that was the most stunted start I had. And that pepper's doing okay, too. I'd really like to see, like, the tomatoes be a lot fuller and a lot flusher. 
um, and again I think they need some fertilizer but they're still putting on you know several uh, tomatoes this cherry tomato is really starting to fill out um, really well so I need to get something covering up because it's going to start turning green soon. We have only found about two more of the hornworm on the tomatoes. I think there was one on this one and there was one on another one. So now we've got a second Cherokee purple coming back here and this one's getting real big. And something you got to know about heirlooms is when you look at that, you can see that it's not perfect. and. You know that's okay that's part of growing unique heirloom varieties and getting away from the idea that everything has to look and be perfect all the time now these punta bandas are just getting ready to change color you can see there um, they've got a nice yellowing coming up there so i'm gonna have to get these protected from the birds last year i used a lot of Christmas tree ornaments that were red kind of distracts them um, but I'm a little late getting those out so I don't know if that's going to be a good trick and again I've got to get these plants fed because we've got some more flowering on the watermelon but that's the best we've gotten so far we went in and put these little poles in if you can see in a couple of the buckets and it lets us get in a situation where we can tie these squashes up to it so it continues to grow upwards like that so another beautiful flower there um, just it's still a male flower now I'm coming to the conclusion that if you look at this mamma jamma it is doing it's so much prettier and it's so much fuller than the rest of the plants and so we're really getting ready to shift that palette of tomatoes more over to that side where they're going to get more shade in the afternoon because i think they're kind of getting a little scorched whereas this one if you come in all the leaves just look so happy and um like they get a good break from the sun at different times of the day now the flowers are kind of sparse um but that's okay because it's given some room for some things like some sunflowers to come in and i've got a couple more sunflowers that i'm going to put in here and these beauties keep popping out so that's kind of what's helping keep this area look pretty <laughs> and i just noticed this weekend that some of the radishes i haven't pulled are going to flower and that's a pretty little purple flower um, this can be uh, cucumber slow mowing and so is that squash but today I'm gonna get all of this radish pulled out of here and um, I'm gonna plant some cantaloupe and some Armenian cucumbers in here and we got a bunch of cosmos and calendula that came out over the weekend and um, this sunflower is just getting bigger and bigger this one is still kind of stunted and then we had a lot of presentation of the cosmos but you can see because of the way that it's bending that it's actually reaching out a lot of the day for sun so i don't know but the the sunflowers aren't so that's a that's a good thing i would have to say this is my prettiest bed right now um i just love the way that it's filling in so nicely the lettuce is going crazy like I need to have lettuce for lunch i can't knock down this kale to save my soul so it's going wild this beautiful cucumber is just going crazy what is this this is a random carrot over here that's growing and i noticed a volunteer that i've got to get pulled out that's a tomato volunteer this is a tomato volunteer and that's a tomato volunteer because we had a wild texas cherry that makes these little bitty red cherries and it grew so many so fast we could hardly keep up with them so it dropped some seeds <laughs> and that's what that is and so the tomatillas are still looking happy and um the oregano is going crazy these flowers are looking pretty i worked the blue hubbard up off the ground and into this and it's seeming to like it while also kind of 
providing an abundance of shade to all this beautiful lettuce. So I gotta get that cut so it'll keep producing. And this watermelon is really finally starting to look happy and this uh, okra is not. So, and I still gotta get something put right there. Now, my next task is to get a bunch of this nasturtium cleaned up, get a bunch of seeds pulled off of it. Um, so, this is looking wild and crazy, but it's still got some beauty to it. Like those awesome nasturtias. Okay, so I've got my Q-tip that I went along and collected male pollen from a week or so ago. So I'm gonna get one of these that's got a lot of pollen in it. And I'm gonna come in here to the female and I'm gonna put that pollen all over the female parts and hope that some of the pollen is viable enough to get her fertilized. But look at that. I mean, we got quite a bit of that pollen off of there, so it had to go somewhere and I'm getting it rubbed in really good in there. So I think that's a good sign that there's like virtually no pollen left on there. So I can't wait to show you the fat squash that's going to come off of that. Okay, so this is the very first slip, if you remember, that we took off of the sweet potato, and this is how long it is. So, what I was trying to tell you earlier is that when we plant this in this kiddie pool, and I'm going to kind of plant it at a slope, you know, so that the what looks like a vine, which is actually a runner, is going to come up and lay directly on top of the soil. And then in each place where there's a leaf, more roots will come down and, you know create even more sweet potatoes for us so um, I've been keeping this cup out on the patio table for the last three or four days just kind of my attempt to acclimate it to outside but this is going to be its final resting place um, probably here in the next day or two here is what we still have going in the bowl and I definitely want to get this one off and I see the value in separating some of these all off so this is what this mass looks like and I put it down in this bowl to just give it even more room to go wild and most of the slips are over on the other side which is cool so I've got some little containers here and I've got um, a bigger one to put the main one in and then depending on how many come off um, it might go back over into the bowl. So let's uh, check this out. Okay, so here um, is the are the slits, and if you come down in here, you can see that they've all just kind of got their own little root node, if you will, coming off of the plant. So to get this one, which is right here in the middle, I'm just gonna kind of get down in here and separate, and kind of pull and separate the roots from the rest of them. See, there's another little baby pup right there. And there's another pup. And right there. So right there is a pretty nice slip for us. And actually coming off of here, like this is kind of its own, own slip right here too. You know, I could put that and I probably will just put that over here into one of the, cause see it's got some of its own roots right there. So we're gonna put it over here and let it go a little bit longer by itself. But we're gonna let this um, become its own slip now. And I'll get this in something that's got a little bit more water in it, but for just right now that'll work. So, now we can come in here and see here's another one right here that I can just come and take right off of the sweet potato real gently and then just kind of act like you're gentle pulling on hair right there. And I'm going to lay that one over here in the water too and try to get all, I just always try to keep all the roots underneath the water and I'm going to get something to keep that one kind of standing up a little bit more. But this is, um, and I've noticed that these grow 
you know, when you put the tomato potato in water that they grow differently for everybody. So um, if you cut it in half and, you know, a lot of roots are coming out, you just do what you got to do to get your slips off of there. And just because it doesn't look like somebody else's, don't let yourself get concerned about that. So I'm just going to go ahead and come in and pull off some more of these slips and just keep getting them separated um, so that hopefully by next week we'll be ready to plant all these. I just want to get them a little bit stronger like this one. I feel like it's ready to plant, but these little ones I want to get just a little bit taller. So that's why I'm going to get them separated off today. And here we are, everything separated out. I've got, um, two in here that are separated from each other. One's a little bit smaller than the other. There's one. There's the bigger one. There's two in there, two in there, three in there, three in there, and two in there. So we're gonna take these back out to the patio and see how they do. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed um, getting to see me pollinate a one of my first crookneck squashes. And I look forward to you seeing how everything lushes up after I get um, some fresh compost and manure and Epsom salts. And um, I'm thinking about going to get some fish fertilizer too because I feel like I just need a little something else. And I don't want anything chemical, but I, I'm going to see if um, the stinky old fish fertilizer might um, perk up my plants a little bit and get all my females to come out so I can have a super successful garden and thanks so much for tuning in to watch the progression of my sweet potato slips and I look forward to showing y'all how that looks next week so have the best week ever thanks always for coming back every week and I just hope you have the best day ever